Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. A podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and being a steward of the land. All right, a couple more questions, actually. Uh, All right, so we've talked about CRP. We talked about goals. We talked about um, a plan in order to achieve those goals, Mm -hmm. you know, as far as uh, laying out our aerial map and then uh, mapping what we want to plant now to to those certain uh, plats. Yep. Now the next thing I'd ask is where where do I what's the best place to go get my seed? What I tell folks is there's a lot of native seed dealers in Iowa. There's a lot um, scattered across southern Iowa, central Iowa, northeast, northwest. There there are a lot of good reputable dealers. What I tell folks is get your get your plan. You've got one. You've got a seeding plan. It's generic. It's it's really good. Start calling, start contacting these folks and say, hey, I'm doing a CP25. I'd like to do short on five acres and tall on 10 acres. Could you shoot me a price? I'd like to see your best price on this this generic plan that the NRCS folks gave me in Albio or Centerville or wherever. And shop around, shop around. Um, and, and I don't say prices because seed prices do like grain prices and everything else, like stocks. I mean, they go up and they go down. Um, I'm guessing uh, right now, seed prices, I've kind of looked at them and the CP25s and the pollinators are, they're not as high as they were a few years back, which is great for landowners doing CRP or any other project. Plus there is cost share when you do CRP, which is wonderful. But um, you can go online and find it. Usually the field offices have a list of people that drill or people that um, have a seed business. And I guess I'm kind of prudent. I'd say call three, four, five, whatever you're comfortable with. Sure. If you know a seed dealer, say, hey, can I can I fax this over to you? Or can I bring it down? And can you, it's been through a seed calculator. Can you give me a price on it? And shop around, literally shop around. Or if you've got a friend that says, hey, I use... Joe over here, or Bill over here, and man, they're great. They have great customer service, and I've looked at some of their seed. A lot of the seed comes from a lot of the same places. Sure, you know, there's distribution centers, and some people are raising it, some people are buying it. As long as you're buying from a seed dealer that knows about the seed calculator and they know about quality, you know, and it's been cleaned and it's been through those processes, you'll be fine. I mean, the quality, I think, is a is a big deal, right? It's huge. I mean, it's huge because it's not it's not just about germination, but it's also making sure, hey, I don't have any water hemp that maybe got into my seed and yep. now I've introduced a problem yep. for me. Yep, absolutely. And and one thing I just want to touch on because I deal with this every spring, summer, and fall. When people do prairie seedings, whether they've converted out of an old brome, cool season, fescue, bluegrass, whatever it was, or they've went from native grass and they're going to a pollinator. When you go out, even with a crop field, when you go out and you seed this prairie, whether you killed off something else or it was a cornfield like you have or a bean field, the weeds are coming. I I get this going into farmers, landowners' minds immediately. We need to mow, 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 mow. We don't mow short. We mow it up 12 inches. We want light to get down. But especially on the older stuff that's been in CRP a while, when we go out and we mow it in the fall and we burn it down with a, a herbicide and then we come back in the spring and we mop up and hit it again, which is critical. You're lucky, you don't have to do that. You, you're just, unless you get a real wet spring and you can't drill till June, then you might have to spray. If you do, do it because the less weeds, the better. But I always tell folks, you're going to have some thistles. You're going to have some things that have laid, laid dormant for years and years and years, I, I hear this quite frequently with landowners saying, I didn't have those thistles out there before. Because once you kill off competition, if it laid in the soil, it can grow. I've seen it with invasives like Cerisia lespediza, teasel, all kinds of stuff comes. That's why we mow. That's why we keep that stuff down and we keep it at bay. So, so you just brought up something. So what's the best sequence, right? So I've got... And in my circumstance, I have a cornfield that's been mowed and baled, so I'm down to bare soil. Yep. So 
do I need to till that? And do I need to put down any pre-emergent before I plant my grass seed? Great questions. I, I get those a lot. You've done something that I'm guessing 95% of the folks are not going to do unless they're working with somebody. Kudos to what you did because you're ready. All you have to do is get the right conditions in the spring. Since you're down to, okay, we took a lot of that corn stalk duff off, that overburden off, you could literally go out. There's many ways to put seed on the soil. We do put it in the soil, yeah. but I'll do this a lot. I don't know if you guys can see this, but we'll do this a lot. You know, twice the diameter of the seed you're planting, that's the depth. And a lot of these prairie seeds are like dust, Yeah. right? The native grasses are, what do you call it? It's like cotton. trying to cotton or feathers. Yeah, it's, it's very light. Um, what I what I tell folks is one of my favorite methods, and I like a lot of them, one of my favorite methods is a no-till native grass drill because we can set the depth of that coulter, the cutter up front. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily need one on corn stalks. It won't hurt. Most folks have that are commercially doing this or own their own drill have a no-till just to cut through and make that trench. And... The key is planting prairie shallow, whether it's with a drill. Um, you had a great question. Should I work this? Should I till this? If you're that close to being ready, whether you broadcast it and cultipack it, or whether you hire somebody with a drill and drill it, I would never till that soil because you've got still some corn roots in there. The second you till this highly erodible land and we get a six inch rain, then we have problems. Okay. It's going to wash anyway. It's going to wash even if we do get that kind of rain, but think about fluffing it up. And that leads to another thing. When you, if you have to work it up, let's say you hadn't baled and cut and mowed and got some of that uh, uh, duff off, the corn stalks off. And you said, well, Kevin, I, I gotta work this down because it's thick and I don't know if the drill can get through or I'm gonna broadcast it. I don't want the seed hanging up on the leaves. If you do have to do that, if you do have to till it, it's okay. Just don't till it you know, four or five inches deep we don't need to do that. You might just run over it with a uh, vertical till or something that just, just scuffs it. Sure. Because the, the most important words I'll say about planting a prairie is seed to soil contact. Literally, seed to soil contact. I want to see a lot of that native seed laying on the ground. And here's how I equate it back to my customers and landowners and friends. When Mother Nature puts prairie seed on the ground, we have things blooming in April, May, June, July, August, September, October. And a lot of that seed is falling on the ground during the growing season. So I tell landowners, okay, when we put this seed on the ground and barely in the ground, we want, we want to mimic mother nature. We don't want to put it in at corn planting depth. You know, yeah. we don't want to do that because it will not grow. If you bury it, it will not grow. Let's mimic mother nature. If you're broadcasting and cultipacking, wonderful. I've done it. It's a good thing to do. If you can hire somebody with a no-till native drill, they probably get tired. The contractors over my way know me and they know I'm a stickler for it. Guys, this deep, you know, when they say a quarter, is that too deep? I'll say skinny it up, you know, skinny it up because the closer to the surface, think about planting it during the growing season. If you get out there in April, May, once we hit 60 degree soil temp where a lot of our flowers and grasses will germinate, some have to go through that next fall, freeze thaw, which is okay, that's okay. But plant it shallow, mow it often. So you're going to plant it shallow yep. and you're really trying to get seed to soil contact and, yep. and basically laying it on the ground yep. for the lack of a better yes. word. Yes. You roll it in, uh, you kind of pack it in. Is it, is it important to do anything? Yeah. It, let's say, let's say we're back at that stage where Joel had done nothing. Couldn't find anybody to bail it. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty heavy. You got a lot of vegetation laying. Go out and turbo till it, you know, something that just roughs it up a little bit, do a little tillage. I would then go in and either broadcast if I didn't have a lot of stuff still laying on top and we could get seed laying right on the soil and then cultipack. A lot of guys will say, what about a drag harrow, you know, a harrow type implement? That's okay. Um, but I would like to, I've been widely successful using cultipackers mm -hmm. and there's some really good cultipackers out there. Um, if if you've done what you've done, in my mind, you can go one of two ways. You can either broadcast and cultipack, or you can do the native grass drill. And whoever you hire, once they're out here, you say, man, I want you to set it real shallow. I want it 
I want, I want it when I walk down after you start, you start drilling, I want to see some seed laying on top because that's mimicking mother nature. Sure. Yep. All right. So I do, I've got two more questions. Okay. Uh, three, uh, pre-emergent. Do I need to put down pre-emergent? No, no. If you, if you go back to where we were before and we say, oh boy, it was wet in April. It was wet in May. Um, Okay, if I've got a flush of weeds, I don't want to drill into weeds, right? Mm -hmm. I, I could say, I, I know I've got a gentleman coming with a 10-foot native grass drill, no-till native grass drill. Here I am June 1st, and it's now getting dry, and I'd really like to do it myself or hire the co-op to come in and, and do a, uh, a Roundup burn down. That's fine, because Roundup is a contact killer, um, doesn't stay in the soil. As far as a pre-emerge, no, because if, if we do that, if we put something on the on the soil that maybe would prohibit grasses from growing or our forbs from growing, we don't need to do that. Okay. If we need to do a you know a, a, a burn down, and we use those words interchangeably, burn with fire and burn down weeds. I, I always say burn down with herbicide or prescribed fire. So yeah, if you need to do it. Okay. Because you're going to mow weeds anyway. You just as well. And guys will say, "Can I mow the weeds? Can I just mow ahead of it?" If your weeds are, you know, six to twelve inches tall, and you go out and clip them off, then you could probably drill into it. But if they're this tall, you're going to put a lot of duff on top, and we're right back to that. Oh crap! I got rid of the corn stalks. Now I've got weed duff. So spraying them will leave them up like this. They'll fall over, and you know, a week later, the guy can go right down with the drill and cut right through it. I have seen, I mean, to kind of what your point is, is on the CP42 that I planted, I did the chemical burn. Um, but even besides that, I still had weeds coming up. Yep. And uh, eventually, that CP42 does take over. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it takes about three years. I, I tell folks, you're going to look at this. You're going to look right out your window and look at this, and you're going to say, oh, my, you and your wife are going to go, oh, my, it's weedy. <laughs> well, time to go out and mow again. If you can get past year one and a little bit of year two, you've been through it. A lot of people have never been through this process, and I always get these, I don't, I don't want to say panic calls, but people are like, yeah, Kevin, you offered to come out and do plan ID. Well, you can come, but there's nothing here. And I told the guys earlier, I get down, I literally will be on my hands and knees with my, with my readers going, uh, oh yeah, there's, there's partridge pea. And, and a lot of times I ask the can I pull one up and just show you? And they're like, and I'll give them a, a seed guide, which you did a great job printing out flower pictures and whatnot. But I'll say it's here. And I use, if it's been drilled, it's nice because you can find that drill row even in June and July. Nice. You can find it and you can go right down it. And one of the first grasses that always comes is Cytos grandma. It comes right up and it'll, it'll kind of spread out and you'll have foxtail button weeds. You'll have all kinds of weeds. It, it, they're just there. And I always tell guys, that's not a bad thing because that is Mother Nature's cover crop. We're mowing, up, mowing it off so the annuals don't go to seed, but it does kind of hold the soil in place. It's shallow, but it will hold the soil in place. So it's, it's not all bad. Okay. So Kevin, you, you're gonna plant this April, May, just like kind of whenever early, the whenever you possibly yeah, whenever can get you in can. the field, you want to get it yep. seed contact. Eventually, it's going to grow. Yep. And I, you know, I know you're a huge advocate. I mow, 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 yep. right? So yep. I've heard that a lot. Yep. Um, when would I mow the first time? When it gets above a foot tall, then go in and start mowing it at about a foot? Yeah, and I won't stand up and do my demo, but what I normally do, I, I'll always say, if, if we get them weed, if we get weeds knee high, we're, we're at the, we're at the, you know, the nah, nah, danger zone because we're starting to shade out any of those little natives coming. We need to think about shin high, depending on how tall you are. I always say if the weeds are a foot tall, mow them to six. If your mower will go down to six, mow them there. If they're 18 inches tall, and your mower can only go down to 10, mow them there. I always like to cut that veg in half. And if you live on the farm and you have the tractor and mower, or if the neighbor's got a bat wing, call them and say, hey, sometime in the next week, I really need to mow because you'll mow often. And it's okay. You might be, if we get a heavy rain year, you know, like you said, prescription rains, you may be mowing three, four, five times. I have a friend whose dad did CRP a number of years ago. He lived right there and he was an old farmer and he's like, nope, nope, no weeds. I think he mowed six times. You don't have to, but his seeding the next year came up and Big Blue was seeding out and Indi so whatever he did, he did it right. Okay. So cut it in half if it's, and I've seen the, I don't want to call them disasters, but I've seen the 
scenarios where, oh, I had my knee replaced and kind of forgot about it. And you go out and it's a giant ragweed six feet tall. I can find natives underneath of it. And then the landowner or farmer will say, what do I do now? I've screwed up. I didn't do it. I'm in August. What do I do? And I'm like, leave it. It's the best bird habitat this farmer will ever see. If you can, you don't have to, but if you can, you could ask FSA and NRCS to do just a voluntary burn the next year. Because you can mow. You can mow as many times as you want in year one and year two, because year one and year two are establishment years. Okay. So you don't even have to ask permission. You, it's just a part of your conservation plan that you doing your if you're doing CRP, you can mow. We always tell folks up to three times in year one, and you might mow a couple times in year two. I have a friend up in Marshall County that on the prairie pothole soils, he said, I mow three times in year two. I sacrifice a little bit of cover in year two to really push my natives in year three and pass. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yep. All right. Uh, lastly, uh, do I need to fertilize no. once I planted? No. I'm sorry, I jumped on you. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you sound like you might be on the edge there. <laughs> well, maybe. Uh... Maybe it's the tea. I don't know. <laughs> No, um, I get that question quite a bit. Uh, do I need to put soil amendments? Do I need to put lime? Do I need to put P and K? Do I need to put nitrogen on it? Man, the grass likes nitrogen, right? I've seen guys do it. Um, they just did it because they thought they had to. Um, it's not required. None of your seeding plan will not have that component on it. You do not, you do not need to lime or fertilize. One of the things that will happen if you do that, knowing that prairie is slow growing, setting down a root, evolved in drought conditions over the eons. So it's putting down a root to survive drought. It knows to do that. Sure. S slow to grow up here and put vegetation up, especially with the perennial stuff. Um, if you fertilize, think about this. The crop that really wants to grow in year one is weeds. weeds. So you're fertilizing your weed crop. And I've seen guys do it and they're like, I don't, it's like fertilizing my yard, Kevin. The weeds just kept coming. They're gonna come anyway and they're gonna do well because they're an annual. Most of our weeds are annuals and they they just keep coming. So absolutely, I would never fertilize. You're not required to do it. Now, I've had guys say, hey, after four or five years, you know, I ran a fire through it. Is it okay to go out and fertilize? Yeah, on your, your own dime, if you want to do that, I've seen guys do it, but it lasts about a year. If you put nitrogen on, I've had guys say, I've got a switchgrass bedding area. Can I do that? Sure. And then they'll call me and say, oh my God, it was eight feet tall. The next year they'll say, God, Kevin, it only got four or five feet tall like normal. Well, you fed it one year. The key is what's feeding the switchgrass? You gave it, you gave it a steroid. That's right. Okay. Basically. And if there's nothing around it feeding it, that's why a lot of, I think a lot of our older switchgrass seedings, when we can do just switchgrass seedings on, on CRP, probably kind of thinned out over the years because there was really nothing feeding it. That's why these mixes that you're talking about have native legumes in them and hopefully fixing a little bit of, of nitrogen in the soil. That yeah, makes a lot of sense. And burning is the best way to manage. So check my thinking here, Kevin. So we're going to plant, you know, CR, CP, CRP C out C there. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, in my head, I should be thinking, you know, the first year to two years, year and a half, let's say, mm -hmm. I'm not going to see a flower. Or I'm not going to see anything because I'm going to, I'm no. going to try to get it mowed down, mm -hmm. get, get it established and choke out the weeds. Yep. And then after a year and a half or two years, three years down the road, then I'm going to be able to sit back and enjoy it. Yeah. Is yeah. that, is that what I should be thinking? Yeah. And I always preface that. I always say to guys, you know, I've seen several droughts since I've lived down here. There are unforeseen things that can happen. If you plant, let's say you, you can't plant till June, you hire a contractor and it's been wet and he drills, because we can drill all the way up to June 30th in Iowa. We can start you know, in mid-April and we can go all the way to July. It's great. I have guys say, should I drill in, in April? It's kind of like planting corn and soybeans in your food plots. We might want to wait on our sorghum, but man, we're storing that seed and waiting for the soil temp to get up there. I love planting it in June but we may have missed all of our rain. So whenever the conditions are right, whenever that's ready to go, do it, right? Um, I've seen droughts cause failures on native seedings. It happens. Sometimes they germinate, they can't set down the root system that they need and they fail. I've seen it. It's, it's a sad thing, but you can't control that. So let's say that would unfortunately happen to you or anybody doing CRP in 2021. Let's cross our fingers, it doesn't happen. But if that happens, 
two, three years down the line, you can have myself or someone from NRCS or Pheasants Forever come out and say, we're going to do an evaluation. And you're like, God, Kevin, I mowed it. I'm not seeing what I think I should see. If it's a failure, a seed failure, a seeding failure, there's always the possibility due to an act of God or an act of nature that FSA will, will help you out maybe with 50%. It depends on the rules at the time. But we've helped um, other biologists and I and, and staff have helped landowners go through that process. Yeah, we're reseeding again this year. Yep. So I not only have seen it, but been been through, through the, it. Did that and paid for it so <laughs> yeah uh, yeah it is what it is right it is i mean it's like a food plot failure it's like a yard grass failure it can happen so i do have one last question so you're talking about a natural grass drill natural prairie grass drill yep i happen to have a 10 foot grain drill okay and obviously it doesn't have any agitation in it per se and again, for people who haven't seen these these seeds, I mean, imagine just taking a big handful of feathers because that's what you're about trying to. That's about what you're trying to spread. Right. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, can I do anything to make my grain drill work or no? Probably not, unless you're willing to. And it'd probably be cheaper just to hire someone that has the correct equipment. That's what I get. I, I I've had landowners over the years say. I've got a John Deere 7,000 grain drill, mm -hmm. right? Can I plant native grasses and flowers? You might be able to plant switchgrass because it's a hard seed or, sure. or drop seeds because that's a hard seed or some of the flower seeds. It'd be hard to calibrate it because you have to calibrate these drills to the mixes. That's the right thing to do. Um, it's difficult because Tim brought up a wonderful point of agitation. Native no-till grass drills will have these I just call them agitators or spinners in them that fluff this seed up because when you're going over the landscape with a drill and, and these drills are very heavy, that seed tends to pack down in the drill. And if you don't keep it agitated, it will not flow through those tubes. And I've had very frustrated farmers and landowners call me and say, well, you told me that I shouldn't run it through my grain drill. And yeah, I'm bullheaded and hardheaded. And my wife said, don't do it. Kevin said, no. And and they've tried it and they've plugged up the tubes and they've got the screwdriver out pulling off tubes and probably some choice words are being said in the machine shed. Sure. So I, to me, and, and there's things that I can't do because I don't have the right equipment. So I talk to my buddies, I talk to contractors and say, can you do this for me? It's always, to me, it's always best to hire the guy that's got it mm -hmm. or gal that's got that equipment, do it right the first time, put it in very shallow, mow it and, and cross your fingers that it's a successful seeding. All right, so I heard you, and I wanted you to know that I heard you because my question is going to be like I didn't hear you, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that so, is. Yeah. So, we'll just so go with could, I, could I take my grain drill and take my natural prairie grass and forbs and blend it with oats to help create a flow agent for my grain drill? And would that work? <clears throat> quite, quite, quite possibly. I've had guys do that with the no-till drills because they can't get it to feed through. They can't get it to feed through or it's so clean. Back when I started doing this, back in the 80s, mm -hmm. at county conservation boards and all over the state of Iowa, the seed was dirty, chaffy. Looked like, it looked like hay chaff out in the barn. It had stems in it. Now they're cleaning it to the point where some of these guys contracting and putting it in their drills going, Oh man, it's flowing through like you know what through a goose. So they've bulked it up. They've put in. Uh, I've got a friend that sells seed that has put in uh, rice hulls to bulk it up, and then it will because otherwise all your seed goes out in the first three rounds. You're like, oh man, I'm in trouble. Sure. So would it work? Can it work doing it that way? Quite possibly. If I was going to try that, I would measure out what I knew to be an acre. If you needed eight bulk pounds to the acre of seed. And then I would talk to somebody that may have tried that, another mm -hmm. farmer, landowner, mix it and go out and try it on an acre. Because if you mix it all up and yeah. it doesn't work, then you've got kind of a quagmire. Okay. That's good. That's a good thought. Yep. Good thought. All right. That's all I have for, uh, this has been really great. Uh, like I said, we could keep you here for a week, you know, 
And I would, to be honest. With you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that said, I mean, you have any questions, Joel? No, I think it's been a great, Kevin, always great to see you. And, Good and, to see uh, you guys. Yeah, thanks yeah. for sharing your wisdom. Anytime, anytime. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. So as we always say, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.